Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at this album here. It's uh, Lloyd Cole and the Commotions classic Rattlesnakes. So yes, I'll just be doing the usual thing in this video, giving a bit of background information about the album, then showing you my, then showing you my vinyl copy of it here, and then looking at each of the album songs in detail. So Lloyd Cole first formed a band in 1982 when all of the members like all by the Commotions met while studying at Glasgow University. Um, although although they are often considered like a Scottish band, um, like Lloyd Cole himself is actually from Buxton in Derbyshire. First to meet up were Lloyd and uh, keyboardist Blair Coward. Um, like they met like after Lloyd put up a notice in the students' union, like asking like for like a like like asking for like other musicians to join him. They performed like as a duo for like a short time um, called Fun, um, and like they were later joined by guitarist um, like Neil Clark, who was like a regular like on who was who was a regular like on like the gigging scene like in Glasgow, like very much like a, very much like a classically trained trained musician. Like he like joined them, and they um, slowly changed the name. Like they then um, went under the name The Cash. And then, like in like an attempt to go like in a bit more soulful R and B direction, they renamed themselves and um, the Commotions. And like local interest, like in them began to grow, like attracting like up to like 500 people like at like their like early gigs. Now, unlike a lot of bands, and um, like who like very much have built up like their repertoire like for like a debut album like over like a number of years, like even by 1983, they still hadn't written any of the songs like which would make it onto Rattlesnakes. Their first cause exactly took place at some point like in 1983 um, like for a song called Down at the Mission which is a very 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 different different song from like what like they would end up doing on this on this album it's a kind of dancey funk track and um, like which was actually like which is actually like reworks like onto the song uh, like Down on Mission Street like on this album However, it's B-side, and um, however, the B-side to Down on the Mission, like, was a much more sort of, like, significant track, like, I would say, like, in, like, Lloyd Cole's, um, discography, like, it was, um, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken, which is a sort of folky track, like, a lot of, like, literacy, like, references, like, in, like, the lyrics, and, like, also a clear signpost, like, as to the direction, like, which Lloyd Cole's songwriting, like, was going in. It was also a song that was written very, very quickly, and, like, this must have, like, unlocked something, like, in Lloyd's, because, like, within a week, of like writing are you ready to be heartbroken he had then composed all the songs like for this album so by this point they were like wanting to get like a like record contract they had a manager called uh, Derek and um, McKillop who like took a tape off like some of their songs like around like um, different record labels and like and like they were promptly snatched up by Polydor like who like were like at this point like enjoying enjoying success like with fellow Scottish band Orange Juice now this was all fine and well however the band was still lacking a a rhythm section because Lloyd had like basically like recorded out these demos like just using like a rudimentary drum machine like so like so like they like um got like a bass player like in like the form of um Lauren Stonigan who had recently quit um the band um a band called the Bluebells so he joined and then like and then like the manager Derek like found a drummer called Steve Irwin like he'd um, previously done some session work like with the Clash so like again like all all very all very very much like accomplished musicians like so like coming together like in the commotions so with the band now fully formed they needed to find a producer and the guy they selected was Paul Hardiman who had recently worked on the Thus album called So Mining which was a favorite of the band so he was brought in and my he was brought in and the album was recorded like in like a matter of weeks like over the summer of 1984 it was recorded at the garden studios in Shoreditch and um, like which were owned by um, Ultravox member John Fox. And like by all accounts, the recording of this album like went very smoothly, was a very relaxing and easy process for the band. So upon its release in October of 1984, the album was um, critically acclaimed and like was definitely considered one of the year's best. It reached number 13 on the UK albums charts. And like it's still today considered um, Lloyd Cole's like absolute masterpiece. Like I don't think, I don't, I don't think he ever really topped this album, like to be honest, like it came pretty close. 
but like I would still say this is like the quintessential Lloyd Cole album here. So yeah, I will try to show you my vinyl copy of it. This is a original UK pressing of it. So first of the cover itself here, it looks like a rather sort of dark cover. Like it reminds me, it reminds me like of the Joy Division video, like for Love Will Tear Us Apart, uh, apart like where like the door sort of like opens up, like and like the band are playing right there. Like it was maybe it's maybe like a bit too dark like for the album like itself. Like like it was a stock image like taken by a photographer called Robert M. Fraber. So yeah, like it's, it's it's still a nice cover though. Like it was though changed for like the American version. Like they opted like for like a more like genetic band photo. The back of it just looks like that. And like also like unique for like Lloyd Cole's albums, they've got the trap listing like on like the front, like which is what a lot of like 60s albums that like, used to do. So like yeah, like that's that's quite a nice unique touch there as well. Nice in the sleeve of this one, she just got a picture like off, like the band there, Lloyd and um, the other guys there, um, and then the um, uh, the track list in there, credits, and the record label itself just looks like this. So it's got this sort of two-tone thing going on there. So yeah, that is the vinyl record looked at. I believe it's also been reissued as a double vinyl set, like the bonus tracks. Like, I've not got that one, but probably like it would be still like worth getting like just for like the bonus tracks. Okay, so I'll now go over each of the album songs. So, so there's only 10 tracks in total here, but like, I will score each song out of 10 and then use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. Okay, so the album kicks off with the song Perfect Skin, which I have actually got the seven inch uh, single for it here. And this was the band's uh, debut single. And just what a um, like classic debut single like this was. Like it was a, it was like, yeah, like one of like the best like first singles like of all time. Although it might sound like I'm slightly contradicting myself because I mentioned that song um, like down on the mission. Like whether like that song like was like um, actually pulled like from release, like when like, the band like realized like it wasn't really like up to scratch. So this was their first proper single. And yeah, it's just a wonderful track, really nice jangly guitars on it. Again, it's really sort of like Bob Dylan, sort of like inspired, like packs full lyrics, like um, packed full lyrics, like on this one here, like sort of like Lloyd was very much like inspired like, by tracks like Subterranean, Homesick Blues, like sort of thing. Um, and like basically, like lyrically, it's about sort of being like overawed, like by like, overawed, like by like a woman's beauty. Some great lines in it, like she's got cheekbones like geometry and eyes like sin. And yeah, it is just a really, really good song. Although it wasn't a huge single, only peaked at number 26, like on the charts. It did have um, quite a long um, like shelf life, this one. Like it was on the charts like for quite a while. Like it was like his estimated date like, to have sold like over like 200,000 copies. So yeah, perfect skin, classic, classic debut here. Um, and like, yeah, a brilliant way to kick off the album. Okay, and then the next track up is called Speedboat, which is a more sort of restrained song, like in like a lot of ways, this one here. It's got very nice, like, sort of careful playing on it, like some really nice like organ work on it, as well as like strings as well, like inserted in just in like the right places. Like it's not it's not so sort of, like it's not so sort of, like overwashed like with like, like it's not like overwashed like with strings and like orchestration. Like it's just it's just a really nice, like well thought out production. As well as that, you've got a really great vocal from Lloyd, it's almost sort of whispered like on the it's almost whispered like on like the verse um, but like then like the chorus like he doesn't like even sing like on like the first chorus it just gives the song like a real sort of nice like sort of like breathable like sort of feeling to it now the track itself i've read was inspired by a book by an author called renette adler which actually like included the line and um, like you were all right then till you lost your cool like which like lloyd like would like incorporate like into the verse like off like the song so yeah it is a good song not one of my absolute favorites on the album like that's why i like that that's why like I'm only giving it like a nine out of ten, but still nine out of ten like it is like a cracking score like for like a really really wonderful song there, Speedboat. She looks like and then the next track up is the title track and possibly the best song on the album I would say it's uh, Rattlesnakes which yeah it's just a beautiful and lush song lyrically it's about like a girl like who's sort of like failed like at love like and like romance like there's some great lines in it like it's so hard to love when love was your great disappointment Lloyd has since said that like some like off like the literary and like film references like in like the song like to like Eve Marie Sant like are like a bit naive like whatever like I would say like it I would say like it's those sort of like 
right to like um so like clever voice or references like which give like the song like and like the whole album as well like as well like its personality as a single though this was the third single it wasn't a great success it only reached number 65 in the uk and like slightly better number 31 in holland but still a wonderful song that should have been like a much bigger hit like i thought because it's just a wonderful song it's really catchy like as well so yeah rattlesnakes an easy 10 out of 10 for me Go down under, so hard. Okay, now the next track up is called Down on Mission Street, which is another, again, really good, really pleasing song. For me, it's just not quite a standout track on the album. And um, this was this was like the radically reworked version, like off like the first songs like which like they recorded, like Down at the Mission, like which was a sort of like which was a more sort of like funk and dance stuff. But this one is completely different. Like it's the same sort of title, like but like really sort of like the songs they are completely different songs this one though it has really nice like instrumentation on it great vocal from lloyd again uh, again there's not too much to say like about this one it is just a good solid album track there so that one would get an eight out of ten Okay, and then the next track up which closes off side one is another favourite of mine and it is Forest Fire which I have also got the single for here. So I just love this song, I think it's a really beautiful, really soulful song this one here. Great vocal like from Lloyd, like he was a really underrated singer I like always thought. And I like, love the way this track builds up, it kind of starts off really quiet, like then like sort of yeah you get the different layers like of the song, like it really is a like interesting like sort of slightly scratchy guitar part on it, like then like these like keyboard fills as well as well as like a really sort of great like rhythmic like drum pattern like which just keeps the song moving i also particularly love the ending of the track as well like it's got a brilliant like guitar solo like from like neil clark like probably like the highlight like off like his like guitar playing like it just just such a glorious sort of full sound and like yeah like this wasn't a huge single unfortunately only reached number 41 in the uk i think should have done so much better because it is just a really 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 wonderful really beautiful song there so yeah forest fire and um, would get yes another easy 10 out of 10. I will you not see? I don't need your sympathy. okay and then we're back to the album now uh, for charlotte street which uh, which opens up side two and this one is a sort of like another really good like sort of like jangly sort of like bouncy track like i think i think the accordion works like really well like on it lyrically it's about a sort of like a university like romance sort of thing like i like to think like it could potentially be about charlotte street like in edinburgh like the home city like but like i do doubt it like of course like lloyd was like living like in like glasgow like so there might be like a charlotte street like in glasgow like not too sure but yeah it's just a really nice song like again like great accordion like on it as i said i think musically this one was inspired by a song on the Thus album, Soul Man England, there's a track on that called This Is The Day and they've got a very sort of similar like arrangement, like very sort of like similar like instrument sounds like on like this one like on like Charlotte Street. So yeah, like that was maybe, maybe like the influence like on like like on like this song here um like but regardless so it is uh, another wonderful song another track which i would give a 10 out of 10 to i can't really find like, any fault with it the next one up is called 2cv or like dushavo like as like lloyd sings like on like the track it's a sort of like a short acoustic track this basically reminiscing about like a short-term relationship and like the fact that like all we ever shared was a taste in clothes i just think the song's really nice it's, it's 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 only about two minutes this one here but it just does its job really well like in like that rather short like running time the track ends really nicely with a lovely guitar solo and like yeah like i said like just like the right length a nice change of pace like after like the upbeat like charlotte street so yeah 2cv another really solid song we'll give that one also a nine out of ten <laughs> Okay, and then the next one up is called Four Flights Up, which is a kind of more sort of like again, like another change of pace, like a bit more like off like a sort of like a rockabilly style track. This one here, like, but definitely reminds me a lot of like Bob Dylan's 60s work, especially songs like Subterranean, Homesick Blues, like those sort of like those sort of like really sort of like upbeat, like electric folk sort of like rock songs. And there's some great lines in it as well, like, would you tell me all your secrets when it's hard enough to love you knowing nothing? And like, again, it just sort of like um, ups the pace like off the album just at the right point. Now, a little interesting aside with this one as well like i believe like it was this track and perfect skin and the next song patience 
for the US market were all um, remixed, like um, like by like Rick Osak, like off the cars, and like and like yeah, he like recently like, passed away, like, passed away like a few days ago. So just like a wee like so like not a link to him, like it'll be like sorely missed. But yeah, just because to show you like how like everyone like around this time like was like interconnected like in some way like or another. Okay, and then the next song up is Patience, which is one, another one of the more soulful tracks on the album. I really like the female backing vocals like on this one as well. Like although they do go throughout the whole song, they do really lay the foundation like off the track, but they don't ever become like overbearing like on like the song. It's just a really nice tender track as well. Like I really, I really, I really like the chorus line. I get the pressures of life through lack of patience. Just a really great vocal like from like Lloyd, like especially like when he does like the line and like. She says the one thing she needs is she needs is happiness. I, I don't believe she's happy till she sees that I'm in distress. Like when he sings that, he just sort of goes right to the top, like off like his vocal register. It's just a really sort of like beautiful, heartfelt, heartfelt vocal performance, I think. And like, yeah, for me, it was a really underrated highlight on the album. So yeah, patience would get a 10 out of 10 from me. But are you ready to be heartbroken? Okay, and then the album closes with um, Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken, which is one of Lloyd's more popular and like more like well acclaimed songs. This one lyrically is about sort of like being like so like so in love like with someone that like the only way like so like to go like afterwards like is like heartbreak. Um, and and like this song was also famously parodied, parodied by a band called Camera Obscura. Like they like had a song out called Lloyd and Ready To Be Heartbroken, like a little like reference like to that like, this track. Um, and I'm like yeah, like personally for me though i've always felt this song like is a tad overrated it's, for me there are much better songs like on the album like this is one like which always sort of like gets like picked out as as like a real highlight of like lloyd's career personally for me i think he's got many 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 better songs and um, like but still a good track though like to be honest with you like on like any other album this would be a highlight sort of like one of the best songs like on it but for me like on like rattlesnakes like it is it is one of my um, personal least favorites so yeah, overall, this album scores 93%, which is a great score for it. And it is well-deserved because I think this is one of the great all-time debut albums. Like, it just works so well, like, as a really sort of tight collection, like, of songs. Like, it's only, think about, clocked about 36 minutes, but it is just, it is just great. Like, how, like, there's, like, all killer, no filler on it. Throughout the album, we've got quality lyrics and great musical ideas as well. Like, so, like, a little... Sort of like a lot of debut albums I kind of like can be like accused of being quite like one quite like one dimensional like sort of like just just sort of like made like for like the live stage so there's not a lot of variety like in sound however for this album that's not the case because there's sort of like so much like sort of going on musically you've got like sort of like Dylan-esque like Perfect Skin and Four Flights Up the sort of soulful Forest Fire and Patience and then like stripped back acoustic songs like 2CV and Are You Ready To Be Heartbroken. I think this album works as well because it's really not dated because there's little little to no synthesizers used like on here so it still really sounds fresh and like very vibrant it's got a lot of lyrical substance on it but also great musicianship great like interplay between like the five musicians like, which is really quite something because they'd only been together like about like a year before this was recorded like but it sounds like a really sort of like a tight-knit band like you'd like be together like for like a long time and then, like as I touched on earlier I would say this is probably the high point like of like Lloyd's career like even like his like latest tour like tour like which is going on like is called like from rattlesnakes to guesswork so he is still very much like well known like for this album like this is probably like i would say like his crowning achievement like of like his career i mean like it was only about 23 like when this was released but i think it has endured like as for me one of the best 80s albums so yeah like, as you can tell i am a quite a big fan of uh, lloyd cole and rattlesnakes but i would be eager to know what you make of this album down below in the comments and i will see you all next time for the next video goodbye to the